The Mount Moon Review podcast, while a podcast about Pokemon, is not intended for children. You can expect some instances of adult humor, coarse language, and adult situations. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to episode 26 of the Mount Moon Review Podcast, the only podcast where the only bombs we drop are on Twitch. I am your host, the Raz Grease, with my co-host, the Blue Duck Gold Duck, as we bring you this week in the world of Pokemon in about an hour. So, uh, last week our episode was a little late. We went over that, and uh, we streamed it live on Facebook. Uh, but we're back on Twitch this week, Duck, and how does it feel? How does it feel to be back on our Twitch home? Feels good to be back <laughs> on Twitch, and it definitely feels good to be back on a Monday. On a Monday, on time. Because we, <laughs> we went over it, for those of you that are, are typically our Twitch followers and didn't see us on Facebook, um, the, the podcast was late because of Duck, not because of Raz, but because of Duck, and we went over that in ad nauseum about how Duck got stuck on a hill, and... <laughs> we started to write songs about it and 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 it just devolved into who had the grapes so <laughs> <laughs> there were no grapes on the hill there was no grapes on the hill <laughs> you got any glue <laughs> so uh, uh, memes aside how's your how's your week been doug i mean I know we i know we just had, basically had the same conversation back on what thursday but here we are yeah uh my week since Thursday has been pretty, pretty normal. I did stab myself in the face today. I didn't tell you about that. You, wait a minute, you stabbed yourself in the face. Yeah. How does one stab themselves in the face? So I had a chisel, and I was scraping glue off of uh, two by fours. I do construction in my day job, and uh, it like created a ramp. And I was looking down at what I was scraping, and it just went. Phew. So I don't know if people can see it on the on the podcast or not through the on the webcam but yeah i stabbed myself in the face it, it's not deep wait i can see but, a little bit of a mark but uh yeah <laughs> not, it, some, not like, something i probably would have admitted <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny it's a funny story <laughs> most, most people can admit that they did that so <laughs> so have you done anything pokemon related since thursday um not really really Just, uh yeah, I mean, I played Sword and Shield a little bit. I, I actually got my competitive team almost completely done. I got them EV train, I got them IV train. There's a couple items I still need. There's a couple held items. But I think I am to the point where... I mean, I, I have actually jumped into ranked play even missing those items, and I'm still doing okay. I'm not doing spectacular, but I'm doing okay. That, I haven't played any of the new season yet. It's it's very memeish, uh, not memeish, uh, meta, very meta right now. Uh, you're seeing a lot of the same things over and over again. Uh, you can tell that people are using a lot of rental teams, <laughs> uh, and and that's a big thing right now. Is a lot of people are using um, are using the rentals, but you you can't do that for uh, going into like a, a, a mid season showdown and stuff. Um, this past weekend, there was a uh, a league about an hour from me and they were having a, a mid-season showdown and a challenge on the same day and i thought about going but i had to call the organizer because i being as that i've done tcg my entire pokemon career uh i wasn't sure about the the whole vgc thing and i was gonna say you know what i'll just go and i'll play and uh i didn't realize that uh, like my, my boys, they don't have their teams together, so I figured I'd just give them rental teams. I didn't realize they couldn't use them. So <laughs> I don't see why they don't just let you use them. I don't know why they don't either, uh, but again, it's the rules. It's not something I can argue. It, the rules are the rules. They're in the book. Uh, a lot of people seem to have... If you don't... A lot of people seem like... And it seems like a younger generation... I don't like that rule, so I'm going to argue about it until I get my way. 
And, and, and tell me this. Do you? Uh, we both are on a lot of the same forums, especially with Pokemon, uh, where you'll see, especially judges, they'll, they'll ask for guidance on a ruling, and they'll get it, and then they'll argue it. They, they don't like that. Or they don't think okay. that's the way it should be. Yeah, I've gotten that a lot. Um because people think they, they the way they interpret it is something is the right way and you, they don't want to hear that they're wrong and they're wrong. Yeah. And, and a lot now, of I have a problem following rules that I think are stupid. Like if you can't tell me why that's a rule then I don't think like I'm you not, know what I mean? I'm not talking about don't walk on the grass. Right. I'm yeah, talking okay. about double prize penalties <laughs> versus versus warnings <laughs> escalated a tier 1 event or or, or stuff of that nature. All right, like semantics arguments in the in the cards, that's some, not something you can argue with. That is like that. There's really only one way to it. It's interpreted at the end, and yeah. I'm going to tell you why it's interpreted that way. And you can listen or don't listen. Yeah, and now a lot of times when people have a question as to, well, how does this? What is? How does this card react or in this situation? And I'll literally look at the person and say, read the card out loud. Because ninety nine percent of the time, but once you actually verbalize what is on the card, they it, it says very very cleanly and a matter of factly what the ruling is going to be. It's usually when they don't understand it. It's usually they're just missing one word. Yeah, that's what it is. They're missing one word. And yeah, yeah. We, we've talked about this on the podcast. Both you and I are both dyslexic, and I miss words all the time. I, I read things five or six times before I understand them most times. Um, but in, in this particular instance, it's just, it seems like I'm dealing with a world of me because people <laughs> – and, and they've got an idea in their head that this is what it says, and they'll read it five or ten times. But it's in their head already that this is what it says. So their brain is not seeing that one word. You know, it'll it'll say like at the end of your turn or not during during your turn. It, it, just, there are different variations of right, it. Right, yeah. But people seem to want to argue that. But then there's the – the whole argument, well, I don't think that's the way it should be. Tough crap. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it is what it is. There is, for those of you who have never seen the actual Pokemon rulebook, that bloody thing is thick. I mean, I have I've gotten th you know th three inch binders just to keep my rule books in, and if you're not up to date on things that are happening, because that book does get updated quarterly. Uh, it, it, people are going to complain and they're going to they're going to push it every time. But as long as you have that book, you're able to open it up and say, "No, no, here's what it is, and I can show it to you." Uh, but people still, even when it's in black and white in front of them, you come down to, "This is the facts, and these are my feelings," and you can't argue with feelings. Right. But your feelings are still wrong. <laughs> doesn't matter what you feel. I don't care what you feel. I really care about what's written. And trying to get people to understand that seems to be like a more like a more difficult thing to do every single time you have an event anymore. Have you ever encountered that particular thing? Or at, at your league, have you ever had... Um, and I, I've, I know the demographic for your league pretty well, but have you ever had the, the Poke parents that show up? Uh, yeah, so one time I had this... This is like right when I first started. Um, there was an Absol that had, I think the attack was Doom Desire, and it said if your opponent's Pokemon is the active Poke, like, if your opponent's active Pokemon is fainted at the start of their next, or at the end of their next turn. So he, and the guy was telling me, like, this is just, like, the best attack ever because there's no way around it. You're always knocking something out. And I said, no, <laughs> that attack places an active effect on their active po current active pokemon but if they were to switch it then it would remove that effect and he's like no their act their new active pokemon will get knocked out no I'm like that's not how it works the, no because it, it says at the beginning of your turn <laughs> right it, it targets your opponent's pokemon if that switches then effects on it are removed yeah but yeah, that was, but that's not the way he feels <laughs> the guy didn't play yeah and and, and you're gonna have that and then you'll have the well, I want to, I want, and you'll see it, especially at like a, a regionals type event where they'll they'll push it all the way up to the head judge, and the the, the answer is going to be the same no matter what. You're wrong. Move on with your life. Um, and a lot of times too, it's really it's kind of unusual. It's not unusual. It's it's actually 
sad. Uh, you'll see, especially with the with the kids, your juniors are like, okay, I get it, let's move on. The parents are like, no, this this can't stand. This shall not stand. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did actually uh, combat a ruling once that I didn't think was fair. Well, go on. They told me I had to have a GX GX on my GX token, and that's not written anywhere. In the Show rules. me that in the rule book. <laughs> that's what I said. And then the guy looked it up and he said, okay, actually there's people that say they've used soup cans as GX tokens. I was actually at a, uh, a regionals where a guy was using a Chick-fil-A tray as a mat. <laughs> a mat? Yeah, he didn't have a mat, but he had Chick-fil-A tray. <laughs> That's kind of neat. As long as it's the right dimensions. It was smaller, so they let it go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was just the weirdest thing. I don't know why would you would limit your space. I already don't feel like there's enough room to keep my playmat organized. There's that and the fact that it, it, it was it's plastic. It slides. I, I didn't yeah. get it, but to each I own. did see a cutting board one time that was uh, the right dimensions, and it's because it gets so cramped at a regionals. If you have a cutting board that's higher than everybody's playmats, nobody can infringe on your space. <laughs> I thought that was a really cool idea. Just I like, like a butcher block cutting board. I like, like that. Like an inch thick. Yeah. I was like, wow, this guy's. This, this, this guy's like living in 2030, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's big brain. IQ 9000. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you what have you got on the docket for us this week, Duck? So. I just figured we could talk about this. Is actually your idea to um, give people a little Dallas forecast. Yeah, so uh, as you guys have, have known, I live in the Midwest now. I'm about three hours from Dallas. And I've not 100% given up on the idea of going. Uh, but it's kind of interesting that I was um, messing around on Twitter this morning. And I saw one of the uh, uh, one of the users that is associated with the Dallas Regionals uh, posted the, the numbers as they stood this morning. And on the TCG side, we currently have 416 Masters, 62 Seniors, and 42 Juniors. That sounds close. Typically for regionals, you'd expect to see about 600 Masters. Um, maybe Seniors a little bit more. Juniors is about spot on. Uh, so the numbers are a little bit low on that end. You're thinking, okay, maybe it's just an off thing. But then you look at the VGC side. Uh, and this, these numbers are actually kind of telling. Uh, for VG side, for Masters, there's 315 people registered, Duck. 315. Typically, you'd be seeing about 150. So you got 315 people registered, uh, 17 um, seniors and 8 juniors. 8. I'm tempted to throw my kids I... in the car and just run down there so they can get the free points. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. If it wasn't for the fact that I have no desire to go to London... I would say let's go to Dallas right now and get yourself some points, boys. Because <laughs> I guarantee you of those eight juniors, not all of them are world's caliber players, statistically, you know. So it, it, I think a stand a pretty good shot of actually doing fairly well. So, <laughs> and, and that would just be super fun to be at a regionals and, like, you sit down and talk to every single opponent you have. Really? I mean, that would be kind of cool. If it wasn't for the fact that there's 315 masters. Oh, that was loud. So I'm sorry about that, folks. We apparently forgot to turn off the uh, the alerts for on the stream. But thank you for the host there, uh, Dr. Rifle69. <laughs> um, regardless, but yeah, the, the, just the sheer amount of people getting into the VGC is... I, I'm, I'm not sure if they're actually already equipped to deal with that at that regionals. The, the biggest problem, I think, that uh, uh, regionals are, not regionals, but events in general, are going to be having going forward with this whole uh, popularity of Sword and Shield is they're going to have the facilities to offer the players the, anim the animities they need to keep their, their switch charged, for example. Well, that, that is a, a thing. You're, the rules say you're responsible for your switch being charged. It, it's not on the venue at all. But here's the problem. When you're running into events that are running this long, 
And there is no licensed Nintendo product to, to for an extended battery. So you, they they are basically telling you to, vi- to void your warranty by getting an ex, uh, an external battery for it. And uh, that, that's going to create conflict in and of itself. But these events where normally with like a 3DS, uh, if, if it was a normal sized event, as long as you're not messing around in between rounds, you should be just fine. Same thing with the Switch. If this was a normal sized event, like a normal day's event, as long as you're just playing your games and then turning your Switch off, you should be fine. But with, with events getting this long, that's... Well, how many rounds? I don't. I mean, I don't know what numbers usually. Look you're like, looking at how many rounds do they normally have? Uh, I have, normally I don't know. I know with that number, you're probably looking eight or nine rounds. You and have that, to have nine. Yeah, so they're gonna be nine rounds, two out of three. So. Yeah, yeah I think that. I mean, I would assume they usually have nine rounds, don't they? I think it depends on the numbers. Uh, VGs traditionally have been low turnout. So I mean. It's going to depend on what they got. I, I'm... And I think most of the most. I mean, I don't know. Now, the moving to the Switch is different, but in the T, in the VGC rulebook for the Switch, it said that there was like the PlayStations had chargers. Oh, oh, where they, could, where they were playing at? They could get something like yeah. So like, there's like a what I was picturing. I haven't seen. This, oh, you're talking. About, you're talking about the docks. They, they, they were talking about docks. Was there was there's a certain brands they were allowed to use. There were certain they were actually dictating what brands of certain items you were allowed to use during the event, um, and I think there even there was even just a part in there about controllers, but I don't have it in front of me to reference right now. But there was um, they're they're actually dictating what type of controllers you can actually use, other than the the standard Joy Cons or the uh, the the ones that are built into the light, for example. Yeah, I, th- I think it was just something about I don't I don't remember. I was picturing a stand at the table that had a wire you could hook up to. It, that very well may be, and if that's the case, then they'll be fine. If provided, but I don't they think they're going to have that up. at every table if they need two hundred tables. Yeah. So what is Pokemon shipping these things around, or we'll see the early numbers at the tables. I, I, at, at an event they had out in California, which was a regionals recently, a couple months ago, they had a problem where they did not have power outlets for the 3DSs. So the entire video game portion was everyone was freaking out and trying to go out and buy uh, batteries and everything for the DS. Uh, and I know that all the local stores in that region were like completely sold out because people were going out there and getting them. But then, you know, they were just finding out about like the day on Friday. So it, you might get a charge, you might not. <laughs> and hopefully it works. Yeah. That actually seems if they don't have something there, that seems insane because the switch only lasts like three, three and a half hours. That's not going to be nine enough for nine rounds. So. I wouldn't think so. so. It'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, if I don't go, I'm definitely going to be watching it, and it's I'll probably be watching it with you. <laughs> but it's it's definitely going to be something that's going to be interesting to see afterwards because they're not gonna, they're not going to talk about it on stream. At least I wouldn't think they would. Uh, but I think that once you get onto the forums that we belong to, and and on a professor side of that, even we're going to see a lot of people's just vitriol and hate. <laughs> so this is kind of crazy. I went to Limitless to find Dallas's numbers from last year, and I don't know how this is separated, but it was expanded last year, and there was over a thousand people. Yeah, it's expanded again this year as well. By the way. Oh, is it? Yeah, TCG's expanded. And there's only 400 people this year? Yeah, well, I, a lot of this events are seeing you know, low numbers, and it's because your American players uh, aren't, aren't willing to go to Europe for, for, the, for the World Championship. That's one, that's one aspect that's going into it. And, you know, everyone's complaining about it, but I'm like, hey, listen we've been very lucky that we've had almost all of them here in the United States, but it, it, it is a world championship. Oh. It's not a United States and friends championship. <laughs> yeah. So put your big boy britches on. If you want to go, go. I personally have no desire to go to London. So I'm not, you know, going for points this year. I'm just 
uh, learning the yeah, VGC, the highest... and then I'll go to Worlds next year. <laughs> the highest regionals was uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, with 778. There's definitely a huge drop in this year's participation. So that's that. Yeah. So let's see. What do you have here on the dog? You said you wanted to do a, a, re, a, a Dallas forecast of sorts. Yeah. So uh, I now, just so everybody knows, we're both not very experienced BGC players, but there is a tournament that has been held every week since Sword, Sword and Shield comes out called the Galar Weekly, which is like put together through people on Reddit. And they just kind of have a fun tournament and the most recent one was the fifth the fifth week and we have the numbers of pokemon that we saw on the teams like what percentage each pokemon was used and 44 percent of the players were using whimsicott i I, i'll I'll be straight up honest i have whimsicott on my six uh just yeah for tailwind it's it's well with prankster it has the ability to make all of its setup moves go first which means you can it and it, the the range of things it can do is crazy. Uh, so it can do tailwind. So you can make you can do tailwind. Then your tailwind makes your Pokemon go faster on the same turn you used back uh, before. It used to only happen on the next following turn. So now it now it literally goes in the order of speed. So if your Dracovish gets faster on the turn that your your whimsicott used tailwind then your dracovish is going to attack first and it's going to do more damage with its ability so i mean and then plus it can set up sunny day it can set up trick room to counter trick room teams just a uh it's a it's huge it's a, it's a swiss army knife you you kind of want to have it in your in your go bag and i think it really has this oh, are you still talking i'm I can't. You are actually a little bit delayed right now. Um, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect you from the podcast for a second, then reconnect you. Uh, so I'm going to okay. talk for a minute on my soapbox here, folks. So, uh, yeah. So Whimsicott is, it's one of those Pokemon. Everyone's going to be running it. Uh, I would not uh, s- suspect we'll see a team not running it. Uh, it's one of those deals where I think everybody that's going to be running down there at Dallas is going to be running Whimsicott. If not everybody, all but. You still there, Doc? Yep. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so, yeah. Um, Whimsicott is, is super versatile, but I actually don't think it was in many of the top eight. Really? Let me see if I can get the... Because I, I just think eight. it's going to be one of those ones that everyone's going to have. It, you're going to see every, every, every setup is going to have Whimsicott right at the front. So the only thing is that it doesn't, um, it doesn't. You, I don't think you want to use it if you're running Trick Room. That's the only, yeah, the only thing. But a lot of people are learning how to get around all the Whimsicott setups, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, and it was actually on one, two, three, four, five of the top eight teams. So, <laughs> yeah, pretty good number. But it was not on the top one. It wasn't on the top two. Well, uh, on a smaller scale, for those that are interested in those type of tournaments, there's always the, you know, the, that, that particular tournament on Reddit. Uh, we also have a tournament that we are going to st- be running on a regular basis. We've done our first one, uh, the, the Mount Moon Invitational, and that went well. We actually went rather well. We used Tom, uh, the tournament operations manager, same software they use for the Pokemon company. Uh, we do everything exactly the way you would is if you were... Uh, at a live event other than we don't uh, actually like have to manipulate your switch in any way. It's all kind of based on a little bit of an honor system, um, but we have ways of actually knowing if something, somebody's doing something screwy. Uh, we are going to start doing prizing with that, and we are going to be looking at doing some plush giveaways, uh, doing some fundraisers for Extra Life, uh, and other things of that nature. So if you're at all interested in that, if you go to one of our pages, you can get our link to Discord. And I would highly recommend that you just uh, jump on the Discord. And unlike the VGC, we actually do allow people to uh, use rental teams. So if you if you want to like get, get dip your toes into the VGC and learn what it's all about, uh, we definitely have a place for you here to do that. And we'd like to see everybody 
like, like to see that event grow. So if you're at all interested, just hit our Discord link. Uh, if you're watching us live, you can see it in the chat now. And uh, other than that, you can just get on our social media pages and get it from us there. Going you, on? Uh, you want to talk about the other um, Pokemon? Oh, yeah, sure. Go for it. That people are using? Okay, so first place was Whimsicott. Second place is Togekiss, which is a Pokemon that I know you have a huge problem with. <laughs> I, I yeah I mean I can get around it it just takes a bit right I, I know you're having a little bit of problems uh, like when you first started it was like the last Pokemon standing to beat you most of the time when I watch your streams yeah I know <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've learned <laughs> and I've also changed my team up since then as well uh, so Togekiss is uh, in the uh, like with the Dynamax format Togekiss is uh, really versatile because it has the um uh, the flying stab so it's able to speed up your team while you're attacking it so flying is one of the best uh, max moves to use flying uh, steel and ground I think are, are the best ones you want to use because you can help set up the rest of your team right on and then third place is Arcanine who is generally uh, pretty pretty um, pretty much on jeez it's a very used Pokemon. Do, do you need a minute, <laughs> I Doug? Think, yeah, no, I don't know what's going on. I'm fumbling. Um, so I think Mega's kind of knocked it out of VGC in the previous years. But it has made a strong comeback, especially with the uh, the limited decks. And I think Whimsicott is doing so good because they don't have people don't have access to Thunderous. Thunderous is a lot like Whimsicott with the same ability. Okay. I, I don't think I've ever played with that but that might uh, i'd like to I'm, I'm gonna have to look that up now <laughs> so you're going to give me make me do research duck what the heck yeah yeah thunderous is is not in this deck so right on can use it right on and right. then uh fourth place is excadrill which is not surprising at all it's another very versatile with yeah team up with t-tar to be one of the fastest pokemon in the games or it can use the mold breaker ability that lets it hit pretty much any pokemon except for flying types yeah, I mean, Excadrill's another one of those ones, just like Whimsicott, I think you're going to see a, a lot of those. Um, I know, again, that's another one I'm personally going to be running on a regular basis. It is probably the most Dynamax Pokemon as well, because, as I said earlier, Ground and Steel max moves are two of the best, and it gets access to both of those. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of people, uh, they seem to fall into one of two camps. Either they're, right, they're Dynamaxing right out the gate, or they're keeping it as a last resort. There's no real in between. It seems like that's it's you either you either one or the other when it comes to the whole Dynamax uh, ability. Uh, yeah. So I've I've taken to it like if I think I'm gonna take a strong knockout, I'll max and uh, take that knockout. But generally, I try to keep my extra drill in the back and then Dynamax that later in the game to boost my defenses. Understood. If I remember to uh, to put candies on it, so it doesn't get knocked out and win it. <laughs> <laughs> You've done that more than once. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and fifth place is Hydreigon, which I think Hydreigon it's it's another uh, versus you know it's got a huge move pool it can choose from. <laughs> kind of crazy that it's still it was the uh, fifth most used Pokemon, twenty five percent of the teams out of. Uh, let me see here. We'll out of 200 players, not 193 players, were using it. See, when I play typically on ranked, I see it in people's lineup, but they never use it. It's probably meant to counter something specific. I think it's nuts that that's the fifth most poke used Pokemon, and it's four times weak to the top two used Pokemon. I, I think people just like it, maybe. <laughs> yeah. but no, you're right. It's probably set up for a particular <clears throat> counter. I just, I just don't know what it is. I, I I don't know exactly what they're running right now, but I know like it gets like fire type. It's it's a very strong special attacker, and it has a, like a strong move pool to pull from. So a lot of times when you see it, you might not know necessarily what they're doing with it. Yeah, a big surprise here is not a lot of people are using Dragapult anymore. Yeah, originally when it first came out, we were playing uh, that whole Galar Beginnings event. Uh, it seemed like every single person I went up against had a Dragapult. Every single one of them. 
It was ridiculous. I was overlooking this, but uh, Dragapult was on the number two team. The, like the second, the team that got second. Okay. Uh, the first place team was Jellicent. This is a crazy team. Jellicent, Arcanine, Togekiss, Ferrothorn, Rhyperior, and Hydreigon. So I have no idea what this team was trying to do. I, uh, I tried to like find. Isn't that one of Wolfie's? Of I think that's one of Wolfie's teams. Is it? I mean, I didn't. I haven't watched. Uh, I think I have Wolfie it. recently. I think I have it. <laughs> I think I have it in my rental pools. I'll have to look. I know Aaron Zhang was using this team. Like he he used the code for this team after after it won. Hmm. Fair enough. And then the second place team was Aegislash, Arcanine, Dragapult, Corviknight, Dracovish, and uh, Togekiss. Yeah, Dracovish is. <laughs> That was another one. Like during Galar Beginnings, there was not a single person not running a Dracovish. Uh, now I finally got one. Thanks, by the way. And <laughs> uh, you know the whole it, it, that one's very difficult to get get ready, and I think that's a part of the, the reason why you might see that on decline. But once you get it, it, it that Ficious Ren is yeah. it's just not really anything else comparable to it right now. So. Uh, it's a, you'll probably see a lot of that in Dallas as well. Yeah, it's the number fourteen percent of the teams were using it. Okay. Um, and then another interesting thing there is if you go to Twitter and find uh, VGC stats, they have this posted. Only two of the top thirty or so Pokemon are Gigantamax Pokemon, and Gigantamax is legal. And those well, two an are Charizard and Snorlax. Yeah, not well, that's every, what I meant. Out of yeah. the Pokemon that have legal Gigantamaxes, yeah, the only two of them, and I don't think Snorlax might be used as a uh, Gigantamax Pokemon, but the Charizard definitely is not. They're using Solar Power Charizard. Okay, so I I think that's pretty interesting that all these Pokemon are allowed and they're not seeing any play whatsoever. Yeah. Now, if if you look, it it appears as though from the rule books, the way they're written right now, it looks as though they're going to update the VGC rules quarterly. And I, I think the only real update you're going to see is them adding in different Gigantamax or eliminating certain Gigantamax. I think that's the only okay. real major changes you're going to see. You're not going to see like uh, rule changes per se, but you're going to see uh, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, which, which Pokemon are going to be allowed or disallowed? Yeah, I, I actually didn't consider them taking Pokemon out of that pool. That would be kind of interesting. And uh, Corviknight was the was 20%. That's also one that's allowed to Gigantamax right now. So maybe they're Gigantamax and Corviknight. It's quite possible. I know, I know so that's, three that's typically... That was typically one of my biggest problems that I ran into playing in ranked for the last season, quote unquote, was people using Corviknight as a wall, and that, that yeah, kind of. I've seen a lot of games end with Corviknight. That's one strategy that I've tried to pick up is like have a wall. Like you just use a really strong uh, team to sweep their first couple Pokemon, and then at the end finish it up with like a a huge wall. Yeah, that's that's Corviknight for you. But I've also seen teams that are all walls. That's just a douche move. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's the guy that sits at the end just using protect over and over again. <laughs> just wait till uh wait till you experience Parish Trap. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what else you got? About it for uh for the TCJ and the VGC. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for the VGC. What do you have anything on the TCG yeah. front? Uh so I went and looked up the meta, uh the current meta in TCG and listed those the top five decks as well. There's no news. <laughs> There's no news. <laughs> yeah, it, pretty much the meta hasn't really changed much. And uh... no, I was surprised looking at these decks since I since I stopped playing uh, right before uh, Cosmic Eclipse came out. It just people it added more text people could use really. Yeah, I mean, you're not really seeing a whole lot of a difference on the um, in the last three months, and and what's it's still the same. You still have Picaram, Reshazard, and Mew Mew right up there. Yep. Um, ADP and now Malamar's ADP making a resurgence. Yeah, Malamar's making a resurgence. So I mean, 
it, it's not changing. You're, I mean, hopefully we see something new come out of Dallas, but uh, it doesn't look like it will be. I don't foresee. I don't foresee any big well, major I mean, changes this is, coming. This is standard. I didn't realize Dallas was expanded. Yeah, well, so your meta doesn't. <laughs> so your meta doesn't this. change. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, ba boom. All right. Well, so there's not a whole lot to say about TCG, especially when expanded. Cause I hate expanded. I really do. I mean, it's great for your for people that are just getting into the game and they show up with the bag of cards, but I, I just don't. I never had any love for expanded. I, I want to keep yeah. things standard, keep things moving. But I think it's gotten a little better, but like when I first started, it was a very restrictive way of play where it's like basically deny your opponent playing cards, and then like whoever gets the denial off first wins. And it just, it's not fun. It was never fun to me. I don't think it's fun to do that to my opponent, and it's not fun to have it happen to me. So I've never really liked that stally um, play style, and that felt like the play style that I had to play if I was going to play expanded. But, um, you know, there's been some tournaments where, like, uh, Rayquaza GX will win, where Pika Ram will win. So. Yeah, I've actually gone to expanded, uh, like, league challenges and stuff like that. And played a standard deck just because, meh, what the hell. And I've, I, I took second place in a league challenge running um, a standard deck in a expanded event. It, it you can do it, but you just you're limiting yourself. So, but you you you'll see some things come out of it, and you know people will learn things from it. But I, I we nothing's really gonna be monumental coming out of Dallas. Uh, yeah, and, uh, be, before we move on, was still the top deck, and even in expanded as well. That was something interesting. Cool. Uh, before we move on too much, I noticed we did miss something uh, in regards to the VG. If you purchase Sword and Shield from the release date up until now even, oh, uh, yeah. you could go into your mystery gifts and you get a Gigantamax Meowth, uh, the long cat. <laughs> uh, that is, if you have not redeemed that yet or if you have not purchased the game yet, the the that's going away. So it's not exactly a well you get it just because you you bought the game. You had to buy the game at initial, you know, between release and uh basically the 15th I believe is the date. Yeah, January 15th. Yep, January 15th you would no longer be able to get the Gigantamax Meowth. So if you haven't redeemed that yet, uh go to Mystery Gifts uh and receive via internet and you you'll be able to get your Meowth. That being said, uh make sure too we mentioned this on Thursday but just to reiterate it, if you've competed in any ranked play uh, on single or doubles, uh, make sure you go in there and receive your mystery gifts from that too, because you'll get BP uh, just for playing and, and ranked, as well as the Gallery Beginnings event. So every time the, the rules, ch uh, the new rule sets come out, which uh, will be fairly often, you're going to get a boatload of BP just for doing what you're doing anyway. But you got to remember to go in and get it. Yeah, and I don't know if people are sleeping on the Meowth, but if you use its G-Max move and it's holding the amulet coin, if you use the G-Max move three times, you get 999k from that battle. Really? Yeah. I knew I knew it was a lot, but almost a million? No. 99k. 99,000. 100,000. Yeah. Still, that's still yeah. pretty good. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty good, and you can do that in the uh, tournament. Like, you can re-roll the, the tournament at the end of the game. and um... Which I, I just did for the first time yesterday because uh, I was bored. And I, 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 one of the cool things is when you go in there to redo the tournament, it asks you, was there anybody you want to invite? And, and you can pick any of the NPCs that you faced, and it'll invite them to the tournament. Now, guess what? When you get to the finals, guess who you're facing? Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, I faced Nisa. Oh, yeah. yeah, I, yeah I picked actually... Nisa, and I faced Nisa in the finals. So Sometimes I, think... I face the person I picked on the first first round. Oh, really? So it is random. Okay. Yeah. And then they also have random NPCs in there as well. Yeah, you'll have the guys wearing the same stupid uniform you're wearing. Which, I'm sorry. <laughs> After I beat the game, let me pick my own uniform like everybody else now. I'm the champion, damn it. I should be able to pick, wear whatever I want. <laughs> like Leon in his stupid NASCAR cape. <laughs> Anyway, so I just, he has sponsors and we don't. Well, I am very, very, very jealous. If somebody wants to sponsor <laughs> us, by the way, <laughs> we are very open to. <laughs> so I think you have masters listed next on your uh, your docket. 
yeah um so last week we talked about uh how they added cynthia and lance to the games or like to the you could draw them now now they added an event where if you spend 3000 gems the the one that lets you you get 10 draws from that and you get i think it's a higher chance of getting five stars you actually get to pick a five star pair now i don't know if that's every one out of all the five star pairs in the game or if it's like a list like they pick like 10 you can pick from i did not know that when's that but start that is that's pretty cool it's already going now and i think it goes till february 22nd now that's i'm just pulling that date out of my memory from when i read it earlier so but... it's probably wrong could be <laughs> so what you're saying is i should go ahead and spend those gems that i've been saving well so that's the, the here's the thing you don't get uh you don't get the guaranteed five star pair if you spend three thousand gems you got for free oh so you have to use money 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 so I don't know if that if that'll hold true. I have my uh, phones charging now, the ones that I play Master on. So, well, how about this? After you determine what the case is, why don't you make a post on the uh, the Mount Moon page? Uh, it's on Facebook, Facebook dot com. Uh, just look at let's search for Mount Moon podcast, and you can find it on there. And uh, once we get an answer as to how that works, uh, Duck will put something on there for us. Yeah, that'll work. Don't just don't be disappointed if it is you have to pay for them. I'll be disappointed. <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm not upset. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I am a parent. I've got two very very uh, high energy children. Disappointing. I mean, <laughs> dude, I will I will come back and whoop your I whoop your ass, boy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Your kids are actually beasts. They are beasts. <laughs> anyway, so Ma that's about it. So that's it for Masters. Is just that that little tidbit. Um, uh, I forget what else got on the docket here without looking myself. The only thing left is in the miscellaneous tab where we were going to discuss if a deck list is someone's intellectual property <laughs> or not. All right. So let's hear your opinion on that. Now, I, I, the argument is being it's making the rounds in the forums that people are a little upset. They're getting a little miffed that their deck lists are getting posted uh, at the end of the events and other people are copying my deck list. What do you think about that? Uh, so the, with your deck being posted at the end of an event, there is a rule in the rule book that says the tournament organizer of an event can post your deck list during the tournament i didn't realize like, it was during wow they're allowed to post what they can do whatever they want with that information wow and, and i i mean i think that rule is in there because like in uh like in worlds you know your opponent's deck list that in the top eight typically or do they actually like distribute it they they get the players know like they give them out oh i, did I don't know if I, I mean, i've never been in the top eight at worlds <laughs> but but I've watched I, I, it. I'm sure they get the deck list, and then like Pokemon.com will post the deck list. Like I've been able to, I've been watching tournaments before where I could look at the top eight deck, like the entire deck list on for, like from the Pokemon website during a regionals or like oh. you know, during events. I was not aware of that. Now it I, might be in just internationals and uh, worlds, but I've definitely done it when it was in worlds. Yeah, as. As professors, when we have any kind of a, a, a premier event, such as a League Challenge or a League Cup, uh, players are required to turn in a deck list. Now, it, uh, you, it different people interpret different ways. A lot of people will say, well, you got to use the official one off the off of the uh, Pokemon.com website, and uh, it needs to be in, in this particular format on an A4 paper. Well, guess what? No, it doesn't. It just says you have to turn in a deck list that has to have your name, your cards, your player ID, and date of birth. That's all it has to be on it. You can write it on a napkin. Now, I might ask you to put it on a regular piece of paper. Uh, <laughs> and, and typically what I would do, too, is I always uh, try to get people to use Poke Gym. Uh, they yeah, had that's, a... that's always very convenient. And you'll never get a complaint using Poke Gym. No, Poke Gym's great, and it's very, very 
easy to, to make your deck list and you don't have to worry about well what's the abbreviation for celestial storm again because it just does it automatically and it's great who's this this character this is the um the idiot that shows up that uh thinks he knows all the rules but he's really just a douchebag <laughs> <laughs> This is the guy that shows up to an event and, and judge, judge, that one sleeve, um, it appears to be a slightly different color, <laughs> you know? That, that sleeve is a different octave than all his other sleeves. Octave's a sound. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it makes a sound when he rubs it across the, the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it... But so that's the that's the that that's what that what is. It, my Valentine. <laughs> that that card smells different. <laughs> he knows what his prizes are because he smelled them. He smelled it. I know he did it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're you're gonna have that kind of stuff. People that come in there and the, but the deck lists, um, once they turn them in, we are actually required to hold them for three months. I can't. I, uh, uh, I actually, uh, luckily enough, with the store I, I operated my league out of, they had a small locker room area that uh, players would keep their cards there, uh, especially the Magic players with like their weekly leagues and stuff like that. And uh, I just commandeered one of the lockers, put a lock on it, and I, that's where I kept it. So I had folders of of deck lists in there, uh, and match slips and everything else. So I didn't have to haul them around. Thank God. But. Um, there's actually that's a question on the professor's exam when i did my renewal last year there was that was one of the questions on there is could you post the deck lists and yeah absolutely can it just yep. and people were up in arms about it because they feel that i put all this work in and then people just they stole it what's well, on stream well, dude so if I, even if i didn't post it if people wanted to get it they just have to watch the stream and write down what you're playing i've done that <laughs> Case in point, folks. <laughs> uh, no, I think another big problem is that people monetize that. You know, you hide your deck list behind a paywall, but less people are going to pay if they know that that if you do well in the tournament, that they're just going to be able to click on a website and get your deck list. Yeah, I mean, I used Limitless back when I was playing TCG on on the hardcore. I used Limitless every single time. I was going through there looking for deck lists, and I was looking for ways, like, okay, that, and I'd use it as an archetype, and I would maybe make some modifications here and there, but a lot of times, too, it was like, well, hell, this is a proven list. It works, <laughs> you know? And, and, and I, I would first... recommend it to new players that were trying to get into the competitive scene. Go to Limitless. Look what these people are doing. Yep. I always recommend this. When you start out, just start using the exact list. There's a whole thing of pride where you don't want to, where a lot of people, a lot of new players don't want to look up their list and there's like this whole thing that people have it in their head that it's better if you don't look up the deck list but they're you know what wrong I mean? like if you just make the deck the... and it's cool to come up with your own idea yeah it really it is i mean really it is and, and i love it I, and i wish i had the list. same the same uh, uh, like fire that some of these kids have that i'm playing this deck because i really like mewtwo you know i love i love pikachu so i'm playing a pikachu deck and I, I actually really wish I still had that, you know, wish I could have that, that, that just childish, uh, like, enjoyment uh, and build a deck around, like, just because I like this Pokemon, uh, you know? I mean, you, we need to tell you right now, I would have a Mimikyu deck today if, if it was any good, but it's never going to be. So, I mean, it is what it is, but, and, and kids generally, when they first start out, that's what they do. And then they start coming to a league and they said, well, I want to play in the tournament. And then they'll get themselves handed. You know, they will literally have their butt put on a, in a box and handed back to them. And they'll be upset and you'll tell them, okay, well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get you to be, be a competitive player. And, but you can't play that card anymore, you know, or you can't play that Pokemon anymore. And a lot of times, too, that's just a heartbreaking thing for them. Or they embrace it, and you start, <clears throat> excuse me, playing the meta, and you're looking at like your limit lists, and you're getting deck lists. And it's unfortunate that uh, you, you don't have that that creativity anymore. But and on the double edged sword of it too is, 
when people start using the same decks over and over again, the prices of those cards go up, up, and up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I played for five years, and uh, you know, I mean, for like the first year or two, I really sucked. I wasn't winning at all. But then I started like net decking, and you know, learning how to play a specific deck, and then based on local meta, I would modify it from there and then eventually it would become this crazy thing and i'd be like okay scrap all the changes let's go back to the basics and work build myself back up to adapt even more but uh it wasn't until the fifth year that i was able to bring a deck to local meta and like that i made myself uh, back when the uh tag team charizard deck was around i was winning tournaments with that deck and it wasn't you know it wasn't anything people were expecting to see yeah, I actually remember you playing that deck. It was actually uh, yeah. quite quite fun, actually. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was fun. It was, <laughs> you know, I would see like some posts here or there about it, but there weren't any like my list was completely different than most of the lists I saw. Yeah, yours was... yours was different. Um, you, you, a lot of people were running it there for a while, but your de- your list was a lot different. And uh, yours actually did rather well, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, I won. I won every challenge of yours that I went to with, with it. Nice. Okay, so, but what do you think about people saying they're intellectual property? Because a lot of people now, they're trying to get into monetizing what they do. And I don't have a problem with that. If you're good at something, get paid for it, folks. Uh, I, I don't, I, things are great as hobbies, but if you can make money doing what you love, do it. I don't have a problem with that. Just don't whine about it. <laughs> but like yeah. you're seeing more and more websites popping up on a regular basis. You're seeing websites that are established trying to get players to write quote unquote articles. I'm sorry, an article is more than five paragraphs, folks. Uh, and I'm not going to pay for something that, uh, that small. And and mostly of the time, it's just an opinion. Uh, I know for a while there, you were subscribed to a couple of the different services, but that didn't last very long. So I started a like a community pool where we where I was trying to get people to pay a, like a fee every month to cover the um, like the paywalls. Mm-hmm. Like if if we do three of them that are fifteen dollars a month and we have five people, you know everybody's paying like six three bucks. bucks. Three, yeah, three bucks. So like I thought that would be really cool to do, and we just share the accounts, but you know people didn't bite. But like. I was still subbed to some of those, like we're four worlds. I subbed and I got a lot of valuable information. Like it's not just five paragraphs. They're usually like two or three pages worth of information after you get through the paywall, after you get through the paywall. Right. And most of them even have the deck list before you have to pay. Hmm. I have seen recently though. I was, I was on a, one of the websites, like I'm as a free user, um, clicking through, uh, just trying to see what the meta was like, and a lot of the deck lists don't appear anymore. <laughs> so I wonder if that was a push to see if they could get more people to pay if they don't show them the deck list. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, I'm not going to say it's not. Except a lot of people are complaining now about their deck list being being put out there by by third party websites, and we've mentioned them already. But Limitless that's the, that's the big one. Typically, a couple of days after any given major event, you're going to see every, all the deck lists from the top, like 20 or so players posted. And it gives you a pretty good snapshot of what's going on right now. And people are saying, well, that's my deck list. You, they're making money off of that. They are, but they're also, that stands to reason that when people go to, you know, Central Park and they take pictures of a crowd and they sell them to the newspaper or. Or, or, or make a calendar out of them that's saying, well, you, you can't do that because I was in the picture. Well, no, it's public information. You put it out there. It's be, you've, you've put it into the public. It's not as though they came into your house and, and found your ultra secret deck list in, in the shoebox under your bed. It, it, this is something you competed with at a national event. That'd be like right. a major league baseball player saying, you can't know my batting average. <laughs> you can't know what, what, what bat that I use. I'm, yeah. That guy's swinging the same way I swing. Hey, <laughs> but yeah, it's like saying, well, uh, you know, Cal Ripken, he couldn't, nobody could possibly know that he was using a Spalding mitt, <laughs> but it, it, it's, yeah, I was wearing Under Armour. <laughs> so no, I, as far as I'm concerned, no, it's not intellectual property. It's just, it, it's your, maybe your original idea, 
but as soon as you use it, I mean, you're you're what you you have a, a moratorium on that particular that's that 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 combination of sixty cars. No one can ever play it again. Come on now, and don't act like you haven't done it before yourself. Yeah, I'm pretty sure most of them do. Yeah, so quick. And how many about times it. is the winner part of a team where it was probably like, you know, fifteen people trying to come up with the deck list together, and they're just the one person using the team that won, but there was fifteen people at that at that event using it. And I guarantee you, they ain't splitting their money. Right. <laughs> right on. So, uh, yeah, but my my answer is on that. No, it's not. And suck it up, Buttercup. So, you have anything else you want to add this week here, Duck? Because I think that pretty much wraps up everything you had written down. That does. We, I was worried about time this week, and we ended up. It's, I'm happy with how uh, how long we ran. Outstanding. Well, uh, you can always catch us on social media. Uh, my Twitter account is the underscore raspberry zero one. Ducks is a blue duck, gold duck, all one word without the e. And you can also look at us on Facebook. I, I'm the same name on Facebook, the underscore raspberry zero one, as well as my Twitch account, which uh, if you are so inclined, you can watch the video version of our podcast every Monday night at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Or you can catch us later on on your podcast platform of choice, whether it be iTunes, Spotify, or Google Podcasts, or any other number of them out there. Uh, that being said, we might be changing hosts sometime soon. I don't know 100% sure on that. I'm, I'm exploring other options because uh, we are not getting accurate numbers from our host currently. And it, it's taken me some nights I just can't get the bloody file uploaded because their service, their website sucks. Uh, so I might be changing that up. But I'll let everybody know that ahead of time before we do it. And uh, you can also look at us on Facebook at, at Mount Moon Podcast. And we look forward to seeing each and every one of you there. And as a reminder, we are having the tournament this weekend on our Discord. If you are at all interested, uh, please contact us and we'll get you an invite for that as well. Duck, if you have nothing else, sir, get us out of here. All right, everyone. Until next time, just remember, if it's too good to be blue, it's probably gold. You have yourselves a delightful week, folks. Just because your card is magic You think you're sick because you killed my life orb Baby, do you dare to not flinch? Cause I'm coming at you like a dark pulse I know you're gonna throw, gonna throw You're gonna throw a stone, throw a stone But I got that lucky chance, lucky chance There's no critical hits